This is the Zach Ansbury Show. Welcome. Today's podcast clip comes from an interview with Professor Akant Veer from the University of Canterbury. So you completed your PhD so at the University of Auckland. Um, who were yeah. you super? Would I have known who your PhD supervisors were? Yeah, you you probably would have. So Brett Martin, who is uh, he was at QUT for a while, uh, and and I think he's still there. So Brett Martin, Professor Brett Martin, and Professor Pete Danaher. So Pete Danaher, who's over at Monash in Melbourne, um, they were my supervisors. So and very quantitative orientation, very consumer behaviour orientation. Um, Pete said he loved me as a student because he hardly ever saw me. It's like I would turn up with a publication or turn up with I, I did, and he's like, "Good, you did the analysis. Good, go away." <laughs> you know, sort of thing. So uh, he was head of department at Auckland at the time, so he was a busy man already. But Pete and I try to catch up when we can as well. Um, but Brett and I, yeah, we given to Brett, and Brett said, "This is what we're doing." I'm like, "Let's do it. Let's let's go ahead and do that." Right. Wow. Small world, and you just don't even realize that people kind of are all pieced together. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, of yeah. I was thinking Auckland in the early 2000s was a bit of a powerhouse. You know, there were a lot of really top academics there. And then just suddenly a bunch of people left all at once and set up as heads of department, heads of research in all sorts of uh, places around the world, around um, Australia. Rod Brody, Uncle Rod. I don't know if you've met Rod Brody, but Uncle Rod was the one who gave me a shot. He was head of department when he when I was being recruited. Pete took over as head of department. And so whenever I see Rod, I, I keep telling him, you know, I'm your fault. You're the one that dragged me out of that in industry to come back to academia. You're the one that gave me a shot at, at providing a, an income for my family and, and still do this. So, um, yeah, he's a good guy. Have a lot of love for Rod. Yeah, yeah, he does seem like a good guy. I've never actually spoken to him, but, um, yeah, I know his research and I've seen his name all over a whole bunch of papers, as you would imagine. Did you say you went between your undergraduate degree, and then you went into industry, and then your PhD? Is that what happened? Correct. Yeah, that's that's better. Yeah, that's right. So I started off uh, you know, looking for a real job, wanted to earn some money, uh, spent a couple of years in uh, Pacific Micromarketing, PMP, which was, uh, you know, politely, we call it uh, direct marketing, but impolitely, it's junk mail, effectively. Uh, but junk mail is a perfect, perfect way to really harness your consumer behavior skills and your research skills. And that's when I really start to fall in love with it because we would get massive data sets, like just huge volumes of data, uh, Excel spreadsheets saying, this is all our sales data. Tell us where we should distribute our flyers. Tell us where we should post. And so we would do geodemographic behavioral segmentation. We would do all that sort of stuff. This is back in the early 2000s. And again, you know, many of your listeners are probably too young for this. But we used to have to collate all this. We would then put it on something called a zip disk. We would then ship that to the UK where a supercomputer would do all the analysis and the segmentation and everything like that, and then send us back our consumer profiles. And, and that's how we made our money back then. And there were no computers in New Zealand or Australia strong enough to do this. So we'd ship it back to the UK. It would churn the numbers for two weeks and come back. And we would just wait tentatively for two weeks going oh shit when's that data coming back has it made it in the post <laughs> and then we would use that to to build our business and so based on where you lived we can say this is what the suburb is like this is the sort of people and then this is who you're going to be reaching based on xyz but volumes and volumes of data and that's when i really fell in love with the analysis research side but i didn't fall in love with industry i didn't fall in love with this uh, drive for the almighty dollar. I didn't fall in love with making money for a shareholder. It just didn't excite me. And um, without sounding too arrogant, I, I rose through the ranks pretty quickly. But the biggest trouble I had was not answering the questions. It was like, how do I fit in all the work that I have to do into the 60 hours I was in the office? And I thought, can I do this for another 45 years? I, I couldn't. I couldn't see myself being this absent dad who would only work and bring home money, work, bring home money. And it just it just wasn't fun. There were definitely times that were fun. Don't get me wrong. There were definitely times I loved it. But I was just more driven by difficult, complex questions. And when an opportunity opened up to come back to university, it, it, for me, it was a no-brainer. I really wanted to come back maybe after about five years of uh, experience. It just seemed to align within two years. And I thought, let, let, this is the opportunity to do it. Yeah. So you already had those existing connections with 
uh, Auckland or? No, it- not really. You know, so uh, when I was at Waikato, I was um, taught and mentored by uh, Karen Fernandez. Some people will know Karen. And so she was at University of Waikato. She moved to Auckland. And so she would take me out for coffee regularly. She kept saying, you're going to be a great academic. You need to come back. You need to come quit this real world stuff, be an academic. And so she would take me out for lunch and coffee almost monthly, trying to coax me back. And then eventually it happened. And she she did a lot of work working with Rod to make sure that uh, I could get a scholarship and blah, 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 blah. So I'm eternally grateful for for her and for them for, for making the opportunity because financially I had, you know, I had to do it as well. I had just got married. We were hoping to have a family. I think, shit, we might have even had a mortgage. This is probably insulting to a lot of uh, Gen Z and millennials listening. So you had a mortgage at 23? Yeah, I had a mortgage at 23. Uh, this was 20 plus years ago. So um, uh, I had to make it financially make sense to me as well. But also, we still took a big financial hit from industry to go back to academia, but I I wouldn't be where I was if it wasn't for that. And I'm grateful for the funding that was provided by the university. Also grateful that my wife was willing to sacrifice and and be a, almost a sole income earner for a period of time to support me, to say, yep, yeah, this is what we need to do. And uh, hopefully I've been able to repay that back to her. Yeah, that's a really gutsy move, especially at that stage of your life to really kind of pivot. Um, yeah, well, a dramatic pivot. Uh, genuinely, uh, you know, we we made a bunch of gutsy moves um, over the years. I remember when I interviewed, so after I did my PhD, I'm rushing ahead, my apologies, but right. after I did my PhD, I started looking for jobs and University of Bath came up. So Brett Martin, who was my supervisor, had just been offered a job at there and he said, they're looking for a lecturer. I can't be involved. I can't even give you a reference because of the conflict, but you should apply. And so I did apply. And yes, there was obviously going to be some conversations and Brett would have spoken for me, um, but I still had to get it on my own merits. And I remember the dean calling me up in my office in New Zealand and saying, we'd like to offer you the job, but we need you in three months time. You need to pack up your life and you need to be here for the start of semester one. And I kind of said, I was hoping to pack up things slowly, see you in six, eight months time. And he goes, no, you need to come to England now so you can start in semester one. What's the answer? And I, I was on the phone and I'm like, if you want an answer right now, it's no. But if you can give me five minutes to talk to my wife, it could be yes. And he kind of went, fine, talk to your wife, <laughs> call me back. And so I called my wife and I said, they 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 want me, they want us, they want me to be a lecturer at Bath. And she said, that's amazing. And I said, but they need us in three months time. Should we do it? And she goes, yeah, let's do it. And so we we basically both quit our jobs packed up our lives and three months later with a 15 month old daughter so she was just turned one when we got the call 15 months old we were in England with no support network nothing my family lived in Kent but that's the other side of the country from Bath uh, there's a photo of us at my fam, my parents home uh, with our tiny daughter on the beach and we felt like we were just in control of the whole world I had hair you know, I didn't have wrinkles. You know, we were just like, we're the masters of our universe. And, blah, blah. and I look at it and I'm like, who the fuck let these kids make this terrible choice? Where was the support? Why didn't they tell them to deploy? <laughs> but they're, they're, we just felt completely in control. And it was just a beautiful adventure for us going to the UK. But within minutes, we had to make decisions. Within months, we had to pack up our entire life. You know, that's that's just the nature of life sometimes. Mm. So that's something that uh, you do hear uh, a semi-regularly, actually, is people needing to move for those big sort of career opportunities. So it was obviously a big decision, made it in five minutes, which I think is absolutely incredible as well. I mean, we had talked about this earlier. Yeah. If this came up, would we do it? Like, yes, but January, not September. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Bath is obviously a very, very gorgeous city. Gorgeous. Um, yeah. well, I don't know what you would call it, but yeah, far out um highlight and if you have anyone's ever in england to go to go visit and the university there the campus is 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 spectacular as well yeah i mean it's it's not your typical gregorian architecture like the rest of the city is it's on the hill uh and it's it's kind of that 60s brutalism that many of the british universities are known for um but beyond buildings beyond cities beyond everything it, it, it had a beautiful group of people just people who would have lunch together and talk research people who cared about each other, people who would protect me as a junior academic. And you'll always find people who will want to exploit you or will treat you badly. But the fact that I had one or two people who were just going to say, 
no, nah, that's a dumb idea. No, nah, Akon's not doing that. I'll go tell him he's doing something else sort of thing was was so, so good. Um, Bath is a damned expensive place to live. And so you, do, you don't get to save too much money. We foolishly had another kid uh, while we were there as well. So I had two daughters by that time uh, that I was just a, a junior lecturer sort of thing. And my wife, who is from New Zealand, grew up in New Zealand, we were looking at schools. Our daughter, our eldest, had just turned four, and we were looking at schools. And uh, she's like, where's the school field? Where do the kids play? And I'm like, honey, this concrete block, this is where kids play in England. That's where I used to play. And she's like, no, we're not raising my kids here. <laughs> you know, she, She's like, no, we need to think about family as well as work. So I did very well at Bath. I am eternally grateful. But then there's something clicked uh, around three, three and a half years later where we're like, we actually need to think about what's best for the family as well as work. And that's where this move to Christchurch came in, where we wanted to come back to New Zealand. Genuinely, we're interviewing all over New Zealand, Auckland, other places as well. Canterbury, I just didn't even consider. It was actually a colleague of mine who I worked with at Auckland when I was doing my PhD. He insisted I come and visit them here just to give a seminar. I was in New Zealand on holiday at the time. And I said, no, I don't want to do it. Don't want to do it came down, seminar turned into an interview, interview turned into an offer. Next thing you know, my wife had never been to Canterbury and she said, yeah, let's go to Canterbury. So we'd never been to Bath and she followed me there. Never been to Canterbury, she followed me there. So uh, this is not good enough for my for my wife to make a decision. So I have no idea. Maybe she's neurotic, but yeah, she, she's been very, very good. To, and we've whenever we've gone places, it's always worked out. We've made it work. Uh, and so we've we've always trusted one another uh, in in those sort of big life decisions. Yeah, she sounds like um, a fantastic wife. Um, what's that Deeply saying? Um, behind every great man, there's an even greater woman, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, well, behind every great man, there's a very surprised woman sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, we make it we make a great team and you know i eternally grateful for the support that she's provided but also uh, you know obviously i support everything that she does and does do everything i can to support her and what she does so it is quid pro quo and everything hey guys it's zach Ainsbury here with just a couple of quick reminders if you've enjoyed today's podcast then make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode there are plenty more interviews to come with some of the world's leading marketing academics and practitioners you do not want to miss this. In the meantime, if you're looking for another way to connect, then follow me on Twitter at Zach Ainsbury. That is Z-A-C-A-N-E-S-B-U-R-Y. For my take on the marketing issues of the day. That was the Zach Ainsbury Show.